The risk management team faces its most difficult case when Ryun finds out that her old best friend Gopdan, or in this life, Ryu Choi, is at risk. As an idol and actor, Ryu is subject to scandalous clickbait articles and at the mercy of cyberbullies, working tirelessly to achieve her dreams while dealing with a father who abandoned their family due to a gambling addiction, she faints during a rehearsal. Meanwhile, Jungil is trying to piece together the puzzle that haunts him in his nightmares. He found out that it was none other than himself who took a Reaper's vow and asked the director never to remind him of his wounds and memories. This leads to him enacting the Reaper's guarantee to prevent Ryun from saving Ryu from a horrible accident. This causes Ryun to go on a warpath towards hateful commenters and toxic cyberbullies. Going against Jumadong rules, she is set upon by Mr. Ha, who oversees Hell, Hellbent, <laughs> on arresting her and sending her back. Mr. Ha pursues Ryun while Jun Wung and Lim do their best to save Ryu and Ryun. Jun Won confronts Jun Gil, causing him to go into his own dreams to see the truth behind his past. Jun Gil swallows his pride and rescues Ryun from Mr. Ha. Well, 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 well. What's up, Sunday fams? Welcome back to another video. We are at the finale of tomorrow. And man, were we wrong about all of our predictions. Uh, not, not completely. <laughs> well, not completely wrong. But this series has turned out to be, uh, quite honestly, like a sleeper hit for, for us in this year because... Uh, I, I don't see a, a lot of conversations happening around tomorrow, but it's covering a lot of very interesting, very thought-provoking subject matters. And mm -hmm. in the end, the story that kind of uh, wrapped up around the finale was truly a great story because, you know, Jun Gil finds out finally the truth of his past and reconciles with Ryun. Yeah, and we find out that the one person that Ryun had to save was herself. Didn't I say that in one of our previous videos? You might have, you might have, but we, we were like overthinking everything. It has to be something about putting their putting their connecting threads together again or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think that was one of my first theories in the first two episodes. Right. Like maybe yeah. the one she has to save is herself. And then when we got further and further, we complicated matters with our theories. Yeah, in the last couple of episodes, it really kind of touched on this, uh, you know, uh, an ongoing conflict between netizen, cyberbullying, and just the mob yeah. in general right like the power of words and the power of comments as we see a reincarnated Yu Chui as an idol as a superstar she goes through a lot of depression facing all of these really negative netizens and comments leading her to almost kind of take her own life yeah and this is the part where Jun Gil prevents Ryun from saving her oh. he runs headfirst into oncoming traffic yeah. and Ryun snaps and freezes but then Jun Gil is like I'm not gonna let you do this and this was a painful moment because you know, you kind of think about it and Jun Gil just like aids in ending someone's or attempting to end someone's life. And uh, I was just like, man, what a douche. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that wasn't the end of it, right? Because yeah. she's just going crazy, going after all of these yeah. cyber bullies one after the other, like even kind of breaking all of the rules, Jumadong. Like we see a camera seeing her disappear out of thin air. Yeah, and it's just risks, like, risk exposing uh, Jumadong. Exactly. And like, you know, Rion, you know, that's that was her one only friend in her past life. Like you pointed it out before, like how like there's little discussion about this show. And like what we've come to find out is that this show is absolutely amazing. Yes, yes. it's dealing with a lot of tough themes and a lot of tough conversations. But nevertheless, like, it's much better than our blues and it's much better than my liberation notes, which are just really boring. <laughs> they also hint at Jun Wung's involvement in this entire story. Yes. Now, like we've been kind of theorizing, what does he have to do with everything? But it seems like he was just meant to aid in the risk management team, meant to aid in the reconciliation mm. between Rion and mm -hmm. Jun Gil. And they hinted, or at least Miss Ku hinted, that there could be a future there between oh. Yu Chui and Jun Wung, like, you know, as he shows such commitment and care for her as she faints during that rehearsal. And she's like, I, I don't know what's gonna happen between the two. And Mr. <laughs> Lim is like, huh, maybe, I guess. <laughs> this all leads to a very sorrowful goodbye as he is granted early mm -hmm. return from his coma. And, you know, we have a heartfelt reunion with his family and he, he uses the snap in <laughs> that in his interview yep. and gets a job, uh, which is, Highly relevant to me because I am about to start another job as well. Uh, but he gets the job using his powers or using the benefits he got from Jumadong. Turns out as as Ms. Ku and Mr. Lim are back on another case, yep. Jun Wong is still doing, he's still working the job even <laughs> well, that, though he's not there anymore. Well, that was always his personality, right? Yeah. Like 
head first. Don't even think about it. Just do it. <laughs> he fell into a coma saving someone else. Yeah, and now he, he woke up and he's now saving another person. Yeah, exactly. And they kind of hint on him, like you said, like being a reaper. Like they just have to wait 50 years yeah. later until he passes. Which is good, right? Like how old is he right now? That's another, He that's like, 70, 80 years. Something like, right? like yeah, he's something. Be... He's about, he's probably in his twenties. But it was just reassuring to see like the risk management team getting bigger, becoming an, an official department in Jumadong. It's all really kind of settled now. Jun Gil has kind of found his his path forward, like remembering that he's his love for for Ms. Ku was like was everlasting, right? Yeah. Like he needed to like break through into his dreams and find out what was the truth. And I thought it was really cool how he defended her and like he faced up against Mr. Hell himself. And he faced six months in that pose. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. just like yeah. that. But uh, what I loved about this show was that even though the whole point for Miss Ku was to save herself, I feel like there was a wider message with Jun Wung in making her see that it was all about all of the people she had saved. It was a wonderful story. It was an amazing show. Like all of the episodes were really heartfelt, like really meaningful, like touching on such difficult topics and themes and can't stop talking about like how this show deserves way more than it has, yes. uh, you know, just like the ratings were terrible and just like, it just did not do well. But just like, a lot of people, I guess, not really The netizens, oh, not, the damn netizens. They're not, they're not comfortable with the subject matters, you know, sometimes it's a little bit too sensitive to talk about, but you have to talk about these subjects. At the end of the day, they all found themselves. They all yes. kind of saved themselves. And it was very heartfelt uh, and a really great ending. You know, they, they bonded and they became like true friends at the end where they were just, they hated each other and bickered at each other in the beginning. And going forward, you know, Miss Ku was smiling all the time. She smiled yeah, watching Jun Wung save that person and she smiled walking away. And he was like, come on, who are you guys really? And that was a fitting end. He's like, we're Grim Reapers. <laughs> uh, and then cut to cut to black, it was the end of the show. And so I really enjoyed kind of having a conversation or dialogue around all of the sensitive uh, subject matters that this show yeah. covered. And there was some like, you know, fantastical action elements in it too. Like uh, one small gripe, I thought we were gonna have like an epic showdown between Shun Gil and Mr. Ha, like the, the, the strongest Reapers. But of course the show wasn't about that. No. So I don't, I don't hold it against it too much. But uh, yeah, it went from like, you know, fantastical Grim Reaper, uh, fiction story to, you know, the sensitive subject matters that I covered. And so I have to give this series, despite all of the negative reviews and all of the conversations around it, uh, an A+. plus. Wow, very, very nice, very nice. I am not that uh, easy or forgiving in terms of giving this show. I'm not easy! <laughs> but, you know, I agree. It was a really great show. I mean, they didn't make the supernatural part of it being the, the whole story of it. It was mostly about the stories. It was mostly about the characters and all the, the conversations that surround all of its topics and themes. And I really loved every episode. If I had any gripes, it would probably all of the holes <laughs> from with the supernatural rules and like all of the things that they had to do, like breaking them and whatnot and, you know, travel and, and jumping, all of that stuff, superpowers. Uh, I don't know. I guess it just didn't all fully connect to me. So, I mean, I still give it an A. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but let us know in the comment section what you thought of tomorrow if you were one of the lucky few to mm -hmm. uh, to watch it. Uh, leave your comments in the comment section below. But that'll do it for our review of tomorrow, the series. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more Asian entertainment and K-pop mm -hmm. reactions. But as always, this is what we're watching this Sunday. We'll see you guys next time.